Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. So we're starting off the front page review with The Nation. Major headline, not existing. Because somebody took off all the entire page to talk about the Ministry of Works and the work they are doing. Anyway, Tinubu injects 2 trillion naira <coughs> to stimulate economy. Edun, health, agriculture, power generation gets priority. In other news, court voids Edo PDP primary. Court affirms and more will list 24 others as Rivers lawmaker. And Lagos pensioners get 4.5 billion naira. So, which is the, are we starting with the good news of those getting the no, pension? Are we doing? Let's start with the good news. Okay. Always the good news because my mother is a pensioner. They are still struggling with theirs. So, for mm. Lagos State, they are doing a great thing. Mm -hmm. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sanwulu has paid another 4.5 billion to 2,000 retirees in the 105th and last retirement bond certification, certificate presentation. Mm. The governor, during the 103rd presentation of bond certificates, promised to settle all arrears and current pension liabilities in the public sector by the middle of the year, and he has fulfilled that promise yesterday. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Good one. This implies the government owes no outstanding pension benefits, and civil servants will henceforth get their full pension benefits and gratuity immediately after retirement. The governor also launched a special... <coughs> health insurance scheme for all living retirees who save the state. Ah, it is doing so well. Yes. Um, they also started an initiative of um, pay as you go, um, so that merely you retire, you receive all your pensions. They have st strategically prioritized clearing all backlogs of acute rights payments to ensure all right retirees enjoy dignity and financial stability. The governor of Lagos State also was the first to embrace contributory pension scheme when it began in 20, 2004, noting that the government has paid over 141 billion naira to over 35 retirees to date. He said that these funds, along with their monthly contributions, have already been remitted um, to their accounts with the Pension Fund Administration. So that's a good one, Lagos State. You're doing so well. Yes, this is good. And we're hoping other states would comply. Yes, yes. You cannot work so hard for your state and mm -hmm. be a civil servant, and this is how you're getting re, um, paid you're back paid where you don't get your gratuity yeah. at the right time. Yes, yeah, so What's the federal the government has injected two trillion into the economy to stimulate it. It was unveiled by the president, President Bola Tinubu, yesterday as part of an accelerated stabilization and advancement plan. Uh, their target is to um, revive the economy in the short term. So he presented the plan by inaugurating the Presidential Economic Coordination Council, PECC, at the State House. And the 13-member committee was also um, you know, constituted March 27th. So the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Wale Edu, was the one who told the reporters that the emergency funding will be deployed to health, agriculture, energy, power, and other critical sectors. And it says the outcome of that very important exercise is a two trillion package involving 350 billion funding for health and social welfare, 500 billion funding for agriculture and food security, 500 billion for the energy and power sector, and general business support of about 650 billion. In addition to a range of policy and tax measures, there's also a range of executive orders which Mr. President has signed, and they are going to you know, gazette it into ease of doing business to assist a lot of people with their businesses. There are many funding provisions to reduce the cost of interest rates for certain sectors, small and medium scale in particular, but also larger companies will also be a part of this. So um, it's just measures that they are putting in place to see how they can help people. You know the way I want to attack that um if you try to get a loan, right? Because you will it's not, not that easy. It is not, not that easy. easy. And yeah. there are policies being done every day by other agencies that do not make sense. To stifle it. To yeah. stifle now, it, yeah. if you want to put so an advert on Instagram, you hand. need to pay 35,000 naira to Akon. If you want to put what? Advert on Instagram. Advert. People, wow. the real estate company has gotten fined for advertising without certification. And you're saying you want to make business easy. Because they sent me a bill that the signboard I put in front of my land yes. is 2 million fine. Whoa. You want to make business easy. So you, there are many other areas that... Yes. So we're not, there, there's no cohesion yes. in making yeah, business. Yes. Yes. There's no yes. sink. No sink. Let's talk all. about Even another business. They complained of the 30% uh -uh. It's too much. Let's talk about the Uniben. Uniben has shut down their school indefinitely. Mm. Oh, wow. Because they are owing so much money in terms of power to the um, Bini, yeah, Bini um, Energy Disco, mm. BEDC. They said that they had to shut down because Bini Disco was sending them 80 million to 280 million monthly. So mm -hmm. they reverted to running purely 
on a school yes. decided to run purely on generator and they started rationing, giving students only one hour of power supply a day. for the past wow. two months. Oh. So students How now took reach? to the streets of and course. complained that mm. we cannot leave off one hour power supply. Mm. And after the protest, that was how the <laughs> Uniben spokesperson, mm. Dr. Benedict Ehanire, said that the students, since they have said that they, unless they get power, they cannot um, go, they will not be in school mm. and they are causing traffic and everything. Let's they shut down the school. No, no, no educational activity, academic activity going on. Everybody go, go home. home. How does that solve the this problem, problem hey. long term? Because mm. they, they are, they've been on ASU strike before mm -hmm. and now they are on no power strike. Mm. Like this financial that injection, is, uh, I don't know where it's going to go to, but there is a major crisis that needs to be concerted, unified effort to solve the problem across board. Mm. Um, I know you have a story. Okay, so I have a story for the PDP's um, governorship primary. <clears throat> so they said the Federal High Court in Abuja has held that the February 22nd governorship primary of the People's Democratic Party in Edo State, which produced Asu, uh, Asu Igodalo, is invalid. The Justice Yang Eko held that the PDP's decision to exclude 378 elected ward delegates from participating in the election was a violation of Article 50 of the party's constitution. Uh -huh. The suit was filed on February 8 by Kelvin Mohammed, Gabriel Oski, um, Gabriel Oski Okodua and Edera Ho Osagi for themselves and on behalf of the 378 ad hoc delegates whose names and ele uh, election results appear on the exhibit. They said the February 4th Congress, organized by the panel sent by the second defendant, are legally participants at the primary election of the second defendant to elect the governorship candidate. The, um, the justice also said that there is no doubt that the second defendant neither complied with the relevant provision of its constitution nor the electoral guidelines for its February 22nd primary. It is the law that political parties must ob obey their constitution, guidelines and regulations. The PDP chairman, Dr. Tony Azegbimi, said the PDP is aware that certain elements who are scared of this souring popularity of our candidates are going about peddling rumors that Igodalo's candidature was not, has been nullified. He now said, let it be on record that Igodalo is the PDP flag bearer for the 2024 governorship election in Edo State. They will go the to state's court position fight. also got mm -hmm. the backing of the party's national body. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he ordered that the members and supporters of the PDP and the good people of Edo State are enjoined to remain calm and ignore the antics of mischief makers as the, falsi as the falsity of the assertion will be made clear in the fullness of time mm -hmm. and upon release of the actual judgment for public consumption. May I have fully Let's declared how that I am for... Are you for PDP? I am, I'm not for PDP. I'm not a party person. Okay. I'm non-partisan. I am person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I focus on the people um, and for me as, I'm Asway all the way Asway Gudalu. Yeah. so I'm waiting for all of this thing to resolve itself because we are going to be need to go and vote for Asway because the punch is the next newspaper we'll be taking we'll just read the headlines and then we'll take a break 10 states battling flooding 21 others at risk federal government warns the government fears cholera may worsen as Lagos, Abuja, others count losses. Flood kills Popil. Rivers to overflow in July. That's in Undo, Kaduna, and 17 other states to be affected. Floods in Ogo community as well. NPA launches stock boats to boost sport operations. Edo APC jubilation. PDP urges calm as court nullifies Igodalo's candidacy. Drivers back 12 year jail for killing Lasma officer. SEC mandates Nigeria CEO, local office for crypto firm. And in other news, Labour heads for victory in UK exit poll. NNPC disagree as report puts petrol debt at $6 billion. Nigeria to host $5 billion Africa Energy Bank. And federal government's $2 trillion Naira Economic Revival Scheme inaugurates council. We can, when we come back from the break, we will dive into the stories. Stay with us, we'll be right back. <laughs>